Hey there, Louis Acabalas here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can schedule a report to be sent automatically in ServiceNow. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials that I publish. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now to schedule a report in ServiceNow, the first thing that you want to do is type reports in the filter navigator, and that is going to bring up the reports sub menu. Now I am going to show you how to schedule a report that I've already created. If you are interested in learning how to create reports in ServiceNow, be sure to click that card in the top right corner of the screen as I've got a pretty detailed tutorial showing you how to create a variety of different reports. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on view run and this is going to bring up the menu that lists all of the reports that you have access to. Now this will show you reports that have been pre-built in ServiceNow and it's also going to show you reports that you have built. Now I've gone ahead and built a report called all incidents so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And this report is essentially just a list of all of the incidents that exist in ServiceNow. So specifically, it is a list type report. I don't have any filters applied on it. It is just a standard list. Now, from this menu, in order to go ahead and schedule your report, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on the sharing button here at the top of the interface. This is going to bring up the sharing menu. Now this is where you can actually come to share the report with individual users or groups and that's granting them permission. And you can see here this button that says schedule. So this is where you actually come to schedule your report. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring up the schedule and email containing this report menu. Now the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to give this scheduled job a name and so you can see here by default, it says scheduled execution of the name of the report, which is all incidents. So I'm just going to say daily email with all incidents so that if I need to amend this scheduled job, I can easily find it. Next, you can see here that the report field is going to list the name of the report. In this case, it's all incidents. And again, if I wanted to change this or do a lookup, I can go ahead and click on this button here. And this is going to bring up a menu that is going to display all of the other reports that I have access to. Now I'm just gonna close out of this. All right, now the next thing that you need to do is actually specify the recipients for this email with the report that is going to be sent out automatically. Now you're going to notice that there are sort of three groups here of fields, there's a users field, a groups field, and an email addresses field. Now really the difference between these is if you wanna send the report to a specific user or specific users and actually list out individuals, then you wanna fill out the users field. If you want to send the report to specific assignment groups in ServiceNow, now assignment groups are groups that are created uh, that are given a name and that have a series of users added to them, then you wanna use the groups field. And if you wanna send the report to specific email addresses, possibly external to your organization, then you wanna go ahead and populate the email addresses field. Now very quickly, if you want to add users to this email, then what you want to do is click on the unlock users button and you can start typing individuals names and then search for and select them in this field. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add myself to this list by clicking on this add me button. And what you're going to notice is that it automatically adds me to the list of users. Now, I will start to type and I'm actually seeing a bit of an issue or bug with my developer instance here because it's kind of hard to see but the, the name of this user is not actually being displayed. Uh, so I can't go ahead and actually add them to this. So I'm just gonna leave it at system admin. But what you will see is when you start typing an individual's name, then you can go ahead and actually just add them. And they're gonna show up just like you can see system admin listed here. Now, you can see here that I opened the user table and I did that by just clicking on the actual lookup. And if I go ahead and select a user, that's also going to add them to this list. And again, just to demonstrate that there's some sort of bug happening here in this tutorial, you can see I can actually select 
the user that I added, but for some reason you cannot see the name. And if I go ahead and select it and click this preview selected item, you're going to see here the specific user that I just added. So this is just a little bit of weird behavior I'm seeing with my developer instance. Now, if you wanted to share the report with groups, same idea, you wanna click unlock groups and you wanna go ahead and search for and select a group. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the lookup to find a group and add them here. So if I wanted to send this report to the analytics settings manager, I could just select them and you can see here that they appear in the groups field. Now, the last field here is email addresses. And again, the use case for this is if you wanna send the report to a specific email address. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually going to send this report to my Gmail account. So you can see here, I'm going to populate my Gmail account in this field and we're going to see in a few minutes that this report actually gets sent through. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you wanna go ahead and actually specify the frequency in which this report should be sent. Now you'll notice this application field, if you're doing this just in the context of ServiceNow, this is going to be set to a global scope. Uh, mine is showing something different because I was doing some development in my developer instance. So you won't really need to change this again if you are just doing this in the context of your entire ServiceNow instance. Next, you wanna go ahead and check this active button. Checking this essentially means that the scheduled job is going to be active, meaning it is going to trigger and fire on the frequency that you specify in the next two fields. Now to actually specify your frequency, you wanna go ahead and select your preference in the run field. So you can see if I click on this drop down, I've got a bunch of different options here. Okay, periodically, once, on demand, business calendar, etc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and set this to periodically. And what that's going to do is this is actually going to allow me to specify my own interval. So for demonstration purposes, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna set this to send every two minutes, okay? So that we can actually see this when I pull up my email. Now I'm also going to specify the start time. So I'm just going to leave that to the default time. So again, if you wanted to actually specify your own interval, you wanna go ahead and make sure you specify uh, when this should actually start. And it's by default just going to populate this with the current date and current time. Next, if you want to actually specify some sort of filter conditions for when this report should fire, then you wanna go ahead and check this conditional box. Now very quickly, just a tip, if you ever want to remind yourself what these fields do, just hover your cursor over them and you can see these tool tips. So the conditional field allows you to specify conditions under which this job is executed. And if I go ahead and check this, this is actually going to bring up the script builder. So you can actually build out scripts that dictate when this report is going to fire. Now, I'm just going to uncheck this because I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this tutorial. And the last option here is omit if no records. So you can see when I hover over this, it says do not send email if report filter returns no records. So perhaps you've developed a report that is looking for a specific filtered data set. And if there happens to be no new data, then you might want to avoid sending this email. So that's an example of where you check this box. Now, again, I just want this to fire um, as per my interval that I've defined here. So I'm not going to check this. The next thing that you want to do is you wanna go ahead and add a subject line. So this is actually the subject line that will populate in the email that is sent to the recipients. So you can see here, I've just put daily report of incidents. And then you wanna go ahead and enter the actual message that should appear in the body of the email. Now I'm just gonna paste in my message here and I'm going to remove the formatting. So I've just typed in the text that says, hello, please find attached a list of all incidents. Now the next thing that you wanna specify is how you actually want to send this report. Now you'll notice by default, it's set to PDF landscape. If you wanna change this, you wanna go ahead and click into this field. Now an important note, so because I'm scheduling a report that mails a list, I am going to see the options to send this report as an Excel file dot XLSX, an Excel file dot XLS, and a CSV file. 
If you've developed a report that happens to be a visualization, maybe a bar chart, uh, a pie graph, that type of report, you are not going to see these Excel options. So these Excel options will only display if the report that you're scheduling is a list type report. So very, very important note. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just select Excel here so that when this fires, it's actually going to send a Excel file with a list of all of the incidents from my report. Now, next you also have the option to zip the output file. So that's actually going to take the PDF or Excel that you're sending in the email and put that in a zip file if you wanted to do that. So that might be something to consider as well. And the last option here, include with, essentially what this does is this allows you to determine whether or not this scheduled job should be combined with another scheduled job. So you can see here, I don't currently have any other scheduled jobs. If I did, I could select that and this would fire at the same time as that other scheduled job. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click out of this. Now the last step is to go ahead and click submit. And once you do that, you are going to actually have created your scheduled job and again, because we checked active, we would expect this report to fire at the interval that we specify. All right, now you can see here that I've pulled up my email and you can see that this report is being fired every couple of minutes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click into this and you can see here it's coming from IT service desk. You can see here the message that we included in the body and you can see here that our list is being attached as an Excel file and if I click into this again you can see all of the fields and all of the records that we included in our report. So that's how to actually schedule a report in ServiceNow. Next what I'm going to show you is how to modify a scheduled job and how to delete a scheduled job in ServiceNow after you've already created it. All right now you can see here that I'm back on the ServiceNow main page. Now if you want to either disable or modify or delete a scheduled report job, what you want to do is type reports in the filter navigator. And again, this is going to bring up the reports submenu. And this time you wanna go ahead and click on scheduled reports. Now this is where you can actually come to access the scheduled report jobs that you've created. And you can see here that I only have the one that we just created, which is called daily email with all incidents. To access it, I'm gonna click on the hyperlink here. And you can see that this is going to bring us back into the same menu that we use to actually create this. Now, if I wanna go ahead and disable a scheduled report job, I wanna go ahead and uncheck active and then click update. And that's actually disabled this, meaning it will no longer trigger on the cadence that you had defined when you set it up. And again, if I wanted to reactivate it, I could just click back into it, check active, and then update again. Now, you'll also notice you have the option to actually execute a scheduled job on demand. So again, coming into this menu, you can click execute now, and that's actually going to uh, trigger this scheduled report to be sent on an ad hoc basis. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and modify anything, you could just do that here and then click update. And then the last thing that I'll call your attention to is the option of deleting. So if you actually wanna delete a scheduled job, you can go ahead and click the delete button. It's going to prompt you to delete this scheduled job. And if you go ahead and click delete, it's going to delete that scheduled job. So that's it, this was just a quick tutorial showing you how to create a scheduled job to automatically send reports that you've built in ServiceNow via email. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Yacobalas, thanks for stopping by, talk soon.